on the phone, but I lost him. So we'll start the meeting at 408. 408. And um, any public comments? Okay. Uh, the agenda, any corrections or additions to the agenda? Bruce, I, I got something today that I'll talk about uh, a desire for the historical society to do, do a tour of, of Fox Island and uh, Pilgrim Springs. I'll describe that later. Okay. okay. Any, anybody else? Okay, uh, motion to accept it. I move, we accept the minutes. Second. second. Well, this is so far the agenda, so we'll get the minutes in a second. Okay, okay all in favor? Any, aye. Anybody aye. against it? Aye. Okay. Aye. So unanimously moving on to the minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read the most recent minutes? Yeah. Any questions or corrections or additions? Okay. Like they've got, been gone over pretty extensively. Pretty extensively. Okay, so <laughs> move to accept them. <laughs> move to accept. So move. Okay, all in favor. Anybody opposed? Aye. Nope. Okay, so moving on. Um, the, I, I think what I'll do, even though we're further down, is uh, my report. Um, just to say a couple things. Again, um, Peggy had considered uh, taking over the chairmanship. She's not going to do it. I'm. I will stay on till November when we're going to be fixing up the house in, in Florida. But then I'm going to leave. So I just wanted to. I, I hope to stay on the committee as long as we have an opening. I will. But um, I have too many things going on to be chair. It, before I pass this to the Board of Selectmen, which is the next step, unless Denny has somebody up his sleeve, um, I just wanted to make sure there isn't anybody on the committee who would be interested in taking over. Well, I can say for myself that, uh, you know, as vice chairman, maybe I would be the choice, but uh, we are going to be spending more time in California starting this next year. And so I pr uh, feel a little bit uncomfortable one way or the other, uh, but uh, I, I don't feel I can take it on at this point. Um, so uh, anyway, that's where I am. <clears throat> for, for, what, for what it's worth, I'm happy to support whoever is. Uh, and, you know, it's worked very well with Bruce and I appreciate his, his mm -hmm. cooperation on things. So. Yeah, and it, besides my own medical problems earlier, I'm doing a bit better with that, but we are doing the same. We bought a house, I think most people know in, in Florida and um, <clears throat> plan to be down there like Tom for you know, a chunk of the winter. So I'm not gonna be around to do it in addition to the other problems. And I plan <laughs> to join Bruce. At his house, and I plan to join you in your house. And you are <laughs> welcome to join us. It, it's a three bedroom, so we have some extra oh, sure. space down there. Great. Um, and so I, sh I should stop at this point. I am actually thinking of not of resigning from the Open Space Committee. I just have too much going on in my own life at the moment about trying to make decisions to downsize and so on and other things. And I'm happy to stay on for a while until we get more people that, you know, by, by the end of this year, I would like to not be, I'm not sure if one can leave halfway or if one has to leave at the end of June or. You can, you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's how long have you been on the committee, Lynn? Yes, it seems. Yeah, well, it has been years. But I, I don't know, and I think we need some, you know, fresh blood. I, I'm not able to give it what I used to be able to give. 
Well, I, I think you're still holding down the uh, the maps and all that stuff. I mean, if you know, you have to do what you have to do with it. But that, to me, is you know, a big job. Yeah. And I will continue. To with see us. I will continue to see us through this next of upgrades that we're doing on the maps and and so on. Well, you've done so much for the committee, Lynn. Uh, I want to thank you personally for all your good work and your good spirits. Well, thank you, Bob. <laughs> yeah. If if we were able to meet as together as a team, would you <laughs> be more would be more of a social? Uh, anyway, I do hear you. You got to do what you got to do, Lynn. Um, uh, but it sounds so, like you're, you're gonna. This isn't imminent. You're you're gonna stay through the through the year anyway. And if if necessary, if people show up that want, you know can join the committee, I'll step aside. Okay. If we can find people, it sounds like we need to um, start doing some outreach, identifying prospective candidates. Right. We have one. I know. <laughs> we here. have one. <laughs> <laughs> and if I stay, if there's someone who gets recruited from the outside, that's actually seven. So, um, you know, that would that would do it. But um, mm. yeah. how many is it meant to be? Seven. Seven. Yeah. So, so we would be okay, but uh, we so we're one over with John. So I should step aside. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I haven't left yet, so we're still <laughs> we're still at seven. I'm not going to leave the committee, but that anyway. We can this wait for you know a month or so, and a month or two, and see where it's going, Lynn. Or you really feel like you? Well, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm stepping out right now. Yeah. Um, but I will be over the next few months. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, you'll be missed. Yes. Uh, all right. I'll move on. Uh, Vice Chair Tom, anything? Uh, nothing more to say to that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, property management, Fred. Anything? Mm. No, nothing is assigned. The only thing that I was thinking of, I hadn't, is you brought up the idea of putting the um, the, the small signs out, the small. And I actually hadn't talked to Doug, so I think we'd make a list of things, and that could be one of them to talk with Doug about around the. I think with the Zoom, usually I'm in and out of that DPW pretty frequently, but I haven't been obviously in years. So. I was talking about your plus. I sent a report on. Uh, on doing the, looking at the, uh, all the parcels this year. And in that um, email that I sent to them, uh, I mentioned about the signs needed. Oh, good. But I have got no feedback from him. Right, no. right. I think we may need to push a little bit, but we'll do that. Are you talking about the diamond shaped signs? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So the idea would just be to put some markers up, particularly some of the areas where it's not clear where the, the boundaries are. Mm -hmm. So, and I think you, Denny, were talking about you know, getting GPS coordinates and identifying, and, um, you know, we don't have to have it right on the line, but just to uh, let people know kind of the, where things, where the property is. I think you're gonna have to take the baton from Doug to get these things done, so. Right, right. Yeah, no, they, uh, they have a lot on their plate right now and um i don't want to overstep at the same time i think if we offered to be helpful that might be a, a good thing at this point um okay trail guides anything lynn well we're ready to go almost with the two uh, uh, we want to have reprinted denny i didn't want to worry you but you had one little update to the i think the box turtle map yeah. So I, I've held off on sending them to the printers. I did. Okay, I'll, I'll get to you this week for sure. Okay, I'm not putting pressure on you, <laughs> but that's a good thing because I'm um, 
I'm going to visit my daughter on the, you know, this the 17th. So I'd like to get them those two to the printers before before them. And then we'll we can talk about the others. There, there some of them are close, right? Yes, very yeah. close. Yeah. Okay, and the elementary school, Bob, anything to add from last time? Yes, uh, I've spoken with everybody there. They've been just wonderful. Uh, I was very, very heartened by their response. First of all, they're very enthusiastic about having, uh, having the guides to pass out. But then I mentioned, well, I first said how grateful I was to them for the work they've done this year. And they're working so hard I didn't want to put any pressure on them whatsoever, uh, but it, would they be have an idea of how they could focus more on the trails? All of them said yes, they would do something. Uh, first of all, in the well, we'll start with who we started with originally. Kathy Ferry said she will is having them do a unit on Wellfleet, and she'd make reporting on the trails. They're going out and making videos or reports on various aspects, and she will include the trails on that. Uh, in fifth grade, Lee Miller, we don't have a trip. He said, fine, he would do the, the lesson on the maps. So on they the, will- Lessons on yeah, what, Bob? On the maps. On, oh, on maps. Map reading and uh, also alternative ways of of looking at things and, and going places. And then the second grade teacher, Colette, no, third grade teacher, Colette Demusi, who I haven't even met yet. She was extraordinarily enthusiastic and very grateful for having been contacted. And they've all, they were all just so gracious. And uh, she said that what I'm doing works in very well with her writing unit because she's, Using having them uh, uh, write using details and describing things before they come up with what they, the conclusion they'll reveal what they are, which is just what we did with the with the objects from the trails, and she's already started uh, with activities of involving going on a walk, a virtual walk, I guess, or or they will go on walks with their family to. Um, so I was just so pleased that they feel that this is a good program. Oh, in. I, I hope. Oh, I got you. Here you are, John. I thought Mia, I guess, sets it up and then leaves. But as soon as I can get my, what we're doing. Nope, here you are. I got you. Here's John and Judith. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Bob. That was John. No problem. Asking to come in. So, uh, they are all all very much enthusiastic about continuing the program, and we're glad to be remembered, and are all doing something. So, perfect. Oh, it, the wonderful yeah. job. I, to them, other people may, but with the schools, I think, Bob, just to, you know, to, to learn all the different skills that they're learning with the maps and, the, you know, the natural stuff, et cetera. I mean, you, it's just been a great, uh, real positive uh, experience with them. And uh, well, I've had a very positive experience with them. I've learned more, than I'm sure, than they've gotten from me. Yeah. Bob? Bob? Yes. Are they using that activities guide that we did for the young ones? Well, they, yes, but we need to get them copies of the, we need to get them the guides now and the activities guide. Yeah. And they are using that. Okay. But they don't have the copies yet, Lynn. We need to get the copies to them of the maps, of the complete sets. So I have a certain and probably can assemble enough, Bob. We should talk about how many and then sure. I can send Great. It to you. Great. Okay. And Lynn, I can help with assembly. Okay. I okay. About 60, Bob, I think. 
I would be better to have more like 70 or 75 if that's possible. And you have some, right? I do have some, yes. Yeah, so we need to find out how many you have. And how many have. Yeah. Okay. I will give you a report. Okay. Thank you very much again, Bob, with that. And uh, also they realize I've made a, a point of the fact that it was the Open Space Committee and the Conservation Trust and how we're working together. Thank you. In, in many ways. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and um, for the future, uh, from the open space part, uh, you might be willing to pick this up, Peggy, with a... Um, yes, yes, especially okay. um, since Bob's done such a good job. <laughs> but I do hope that he will um, stay on in an advisory capacity. Definitely, um, when the time comes when it's safe, I would love to meet the teachers and have Bob make that introduction. Yes. And the principal, and the principal. I enjoy that too while I'm around. So, Bob. Say that again? I would enjoy that too. Oh, good. Let's, we'll definitely make a try. You know, we can't go into the school building is the problem, but we definitely need to, to meet with them somehow. Yeah. I think under the from the state that uh, if they're going to go into the field, you could probably meet them in the field. Right. That would be an option, definitely. I don't think they're going to go into the field, actually. Oh. These yeah. are all things that they're doing as extra credit homework things for oh. the kids to do and so forth. So they're not, they're not taking any field trips this year. Oh. Well, next year. Yeah. And this year, maybe we can be, you know, uh, privately with them outside of the school building, we could meet with them. That's true too. They could come to lunch or something. Mm. Flying fish is open. Oh, outdoors, okay. outdoor seating. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, to moving on again, thanks, Bob, with that. And the Conservation Trust, the only thing I wanted to mention was that the Herring uh, River Overlook is getting close, that the uh, trail is getting close to finish. Any, anything else, Danny? Well, I didn't know if you want to talk about open space plans. Okay, I, I'll talk. I was, I definitely have a lot to talk about with that. And uh, we can do it here as well as any time. Um, and, the, and then this is where I would bring in the one other item I have. Okay. Um, so what's happened with the open space plan? Denny found a writer, Jeff uh, Thibodeau, who has written 90% of the plans out. It'd just be a wonderful person to hire. Um, and even offered to, um, uh, to do the grant. Um, the the I, I had contact with the with the Wellfleet uh, administration and that the new uh, assistant administrator Rebecca Slick um, is aware of has worked on uh, five year plans in the last town she worked. Um, she was supportive, but um, did not want us to use our money. The town, as I'm sure everybody here knows, is fiscally not in good shape. And so she said she would help us if we wanted to do the grant. So I've, I've kept Jeff updated on that, but the, uh, the next step had been, and I finally, Mark Robinson uh, called the, uh, uh, the energy and uh, whatever the title of that state agency is, and I got a call back, <laughs> I've been waiting. Rebecca called the, the head of the grant program I called twice and wrote an email and there's been no contact. Mark has more pull than we do obviously. And we got a call back. And um, our read on the situation is, is really correct. And that is just to remind people, this is a grant that um, we get up to $12,500. So it's a, a great deal for the town if, if, uh, if Jeff were to charge us 16 for really small money um, we could do it and 
and the Conservation Trust has kindly offered to help out with that. The problem now is that the, the, uh, to put the grant in, we'd have to be able to do it by uh, May 7th. Um, it's, it's a short grant, but that's very, very optimistic. But the other part of it is you have to have a land grant. You have to be applying for this LAND uh, grant or PARC, P-A-R-C, in order to get the, the $12,500. If you don't apply in the year, you don't get the money. And so here's the town uh, hassling me about you know, a thousand dollars, and um, you know, if we didn't come up with the property over the course of the next year, uh, we wouldn't get the twelve thousand five hundred dollars. We'd be on the hook for the whole thing. The other thing is the land grant uh, for next year is due in July, and I think even more daunting than getting this grant in, you know, the grant application in uh, by the May seventh is coming up with a, uh, uh, with a, a land uh, grant property that we can, we can do. And um, so it's not doable for this year, but the good news is we uh, have a connection. And uh, if we either on our own, or I think more likely with a conservation trust, if we're doing a, a conservation restriction, if they are, if we work any, of the, we can get up to $400,000 from the state. So we not only get the good news of this is we not only get 80% of the uh, five-year plan paid for, but we could get some good money to help us with the purchase. So it's, it's definitely worth doing. Um, we've got an early start on it this year. We're not chasing after things. Um, if people hear what I'm saying, it's just not, possible in my opinion you can weigh in Denny but uh, to come up with a, uh, a land grant property and get enough done this year that this would go to town meeting next year I just don't see it happening I, so, I agree with you 100 percent Bruce so Bruce say again where the 400,000 comes from that's if we get a land grant so up to so this doesn't have to you know this if if we were doing a conservation restriction and it was a hundred thousand or something like that, that money and I, I forget the at specifics is it eighty percent or whatever it is, but that money would come out of that grant. So in addition okay. to the uh, the payment for the five year plan, the the state would help us buy a piece of property. So it's it's really a win win for the town. The the downside is if we're not successful in doing the land grant. Then we don't get the twelve thousand dollars five hundred, and um, so uh, you know we want to uh, at least we, we don't need to be successful. The town meeting can shut us down. And we can get the money, but we we need to be in good faith at the point we were taking this to the town meeting, et cetera. And, and this comes from talking with the uh, both Mark and the uh, state grant person so that my read on this is correct. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm not clear yet, Bruce, on when the land grant has to be done by. Is the, the one for next year would have to be done by um, July. I forget the exact date, but sometime in July, okay? Of 2022. Right. 2022. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, this, what I, I think we're in great shape, but this is also a grant that is the, uh, the five-year plan part of the grant is not competitive, but it, it's given out on a first come first serve basis. So we, we can jump on this and really, uh, uh, hopefully Rebecca will, um, will help us with it and um, get this out really soon in the next with the idea that we're going to come up with a property and we've got some time to do that. And um, I think about the piles property uh, with, you know, the state money, is that more doable than any, you know, could we, could we do something in conjunction with you guys to get it? Um, but I think it's a, it, it's a great opportunity, but it's, um, uh, I just, uh, unfortunately, you know, like I say, we've got 
time next year we had lots of time we can get the money because we will be first in line but uh it, I don't, it, unfortunately i just don't think it's going to happen this year so uh, again what? to clarify we would or would not try to meet this year the may deadline would for, not not okay so we're talking about may of 2022 Correct. and then at that same time we would hope to have a property identified. Correct. That we would be purchasing or- so we're, we're, We'll be working on the property to try to get that something in hand, you know, and working probably with Conservation Trust to try to get something in hand. And, and we, the win-win the with this is if we can do that, we get up to $400,000 from the state and we get our five-year plan 80% paid for. So it, it's a great, it's a great thing. Yeah. But I, I think to have the land project at least, uh, at least a goal, at least something we know we can really move forward with is something we need to do. Denny, so we'd be asking uh, Jeff to write both the land grant and uh, the, uh, the application for the application. The, the town does not want us to use even, you know, our allotted money to allow for the, the grant. Rebecca's saying that she can help us do the grant, do the application, I'm sorry, to the grant friend. Is this the grant for the, for the long range plan, the five year plan? I'm sorry, can you say that? Is this money to pay for some someone to do the the five year plan? Yeah, let me just say because it is complicated. Let me just say it again. So it's it's kind of a crazy situation. We we actually I have talked with the state grant administrator in with Mark Robinson, and we're clear about the way this thing works. Basically, the way I think about it, at least, is they are giving small towns. So if you're less than six thousand population the ability to get the five-year plan done. One of the things that they see, I think, as an incentive is they have this, you have to have a land that's the one that's most likely for us to do, or park PARC, or there are a couple of others, but I think the land is the most likely looking for property to bring to town meeting, essentially to, to, to sign on to. If we ultimately aren't successful, you know, if town meeting votes it down, that's fine. But if we don't have a property, we don't get the money contingent on the, the 12,500 for the five-year plan is we have to have a property in hand. So what I'm saying is this year, let's see if we can find a property. And if we can, we can move forward with this and get two things done at the same time, get our, get, be able to pay Jeff to do the five-year plan and to, to get a property, which everyone had, we've not done as everybody knows. And I've heard, you know, uh, concerns about for, for a long time. So. Um, well, let me ask this, uh, where is the resistance uh, to having Jeff do this come from other than uh, the assistant town administrator? Well, it just it's not, the, just so I'm clear again with this, because it's not, they're not resistant to Jeff writing the five-year plan at all. That's not where the resistance is. The, they just don't want to pay him. The grant, no, no, no. The, the, it's the grant application. I may have said grant, but in order to get this grant, we have to do an application. The application's not a long one, but you know, Fred and I, who are now the committee, <laughs> mm -hmm. looked at it and felt like we could use some help. Rebecca's saying she can be that help. Okay. And and I have to say, as I won't name names, but as compared to it's one of the past administrators who was working with us, Rebecca has been responsive to me. She has, you know, offered to help with this. She's called the state administrator. So I, I don't want to, you know, she's put herself out there so far, and she has some experience with it. So um, you just wonder uh, uh, now that we have no town administrator, 
uh, how much time uh, she's going to have uh, for doing such things. But I, I do hear you, and you know we may revisit it, maybe with all that's going on, because because it's within our budget to do it. I mean, I you know, yeah. but um, we've really specifically been asked by the town not to pursue it that way, that this is something with their help. So I think that's the, the first step. Again, this is not happening, you know, in two weeks. So this is for next year. And so we got some time to, to work on this, I think. Um, and, and Jeff's payment for the grant, you know, is not in question. We don't have to put it out for bid. All we need to do is ask three people. I can ask Mark and one other person who don't want to do it, um, you know, just uh, who, but who have experience in this stuff. I mean, they're not unreasonable people. Um, if they say no, then it just goes to Jeff. It doesn't have to go out to a bid. Um, so I, I, I really hope Jeff remains interested because uh, he'd be a wonderful person for the, to do it. So we're really talking, Bruce, we're really talking about three applications, one which we can do cheaply to apply for the uh, 12,000. Um, there's the OSRP writing the SRP application for somebody. Somebody has to write that. Correct. And then the land application. So there's three things to be written. Right. So again, I think with this, we can continue to work with the town. And, you know, Jeff has been very willing. It's been great to work with, is willing to do this stuff. Um, I, I think, you know, I, I think things right now are so tight that the town's sort of saying, we can't spend it. This is such a bargain for the town. I mean, you're paying Jeff a thousand dollars is small money to get you know, the first step done and then to move on, he's willing, he's gonna do, willing to do the five-year plan. The other grant stuff we'll have to look at as well. But we got a year, to, Bruce, we have a year to do it. Danny? Bruce, I, I, I'd suggest that you push Rebecca to get the grant application in uh, and see where that goes. And if she can't get it done, then, then maybe we'll crank up uh, Jeff Thibodeau to do the application again, but but for now, if Rebecca says she can do the the short application, well, she she says she'll help us. <laughs> A little bit different, but but I we can try. I mean, I'm willing if, if Fred is. Well, and we'll see where she's at. I, my worry is just what Tom said. I think the obviously the town's in some some chaos right now, so we'll see. But I, I think if that's the case, then we could press our case that gee, you know a thousand bucks is small money to yeah. really be able to potentially get the money for both you know a land grant and for the five-year plan i think it's it's just a win-win um i think it's right now what's happened is we're panic mode might be a little strong but you know we're no it's um, not yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, my concern is, and I think this is what Fred has just brought up, that we're really talking about three applications. And although it's a year before we'd have to have them all done, we need to be doing them now, at least making making a plan for when we will have right. the grant application for the, the um, grant writing. Right. And then the SRP, it sounds, is a separate part of the process. And then the third, I realize we can't apply for the land or park grant until we actually have a property, but. Right. In, in the past. It, it will be May before we, May of 2022, before we know it. Right. <laughs> in, in, the past, taken. in the past, when we've had a, uh, a, a project go for a land grant, we've had Mark do the application. So, so that grant application, in my mind, is covered. Uh, we just have to get in Mark's queue, so to speak. Okay. So, but uh, the the others were you're on your own, so to speak. Right. We are on our own. Right. And and uh, Peggy, I hear your your point's well taken. And so we'll, if if you're able to, Fred, we can sit down at some point in the near future. I'm, I'm going to be back down in Florida taking care of our property in a week. But uh, after that, we can 
start putting together this grant and see how easy it is and how available Rebecca is. And, um, you know, if, if she isn't and it looks tough for us, then I would go back to the town and just say, listen, this is small seed money to get um, what's going to be a real potential benefit to the town. So. I'm gay. So the delay not starting the, the five-year plan is because of money? Not getting that going? No, it's, it's again, Lynn, the, the thing for that, for this particular grant, it's not just for the five-year plan. We have to have a land grant application in as well. But don't we want to get started on the five-year plan even though we need the other? So in order to, the problem is if we don't have the other, we don't get the state payment for the five-year plan. But, but, that, the, but the, let, me, let me just say what has been said and which we've, Fred and I have agreed to do is, you know, Peggy made the good point that, you know, that time passes real quickly. <laughs> it's, right. Particularly these things could chew up your time. So to get the application in, I think for the grant, is something that we can start to do right now. We can see what we can do with this and um, and then be looking actively because we need to come up with a property for this to, to go through. But um, we can be doing that as well. Um, and what Denny is saying is that Mark can do that application. So um, I think if we start now and we'll see where where it goes it's a i think it's a great opportunity the good news is that um uh, it really is a great opportunity for us in the town so and well, meanwhile we're, all, we're also i trying to identify a property and working to acquire that property correct so that's really a fourth a fourth piece to the puzzle that comes in early because in order to make this application for the land grant which is the third one that you're talking about. You need an executed purchase and sale agreement. So whatever you do, we've got to have that in place. And I suspect that'll be something between WCT and Open Space Committee. So, uh, but we'll see, maybe, maybe you find something you can do on your own. But the, uh, the other point that I was trying to make is that land grants are one for one. Uh, you have to, you. You have to invest one dollar to get a dollar, and they're also uh, reimbursement plans, which means you have to pay for it before you get the grant. Right. We've been there before. Mm -hmm. and it really takes a lot of guidance of of the town financial people to show them how to do it, right. but it worked, and it'll work again, and that's what other towns do. And the, the other thing I'd say is depending upon how much we're asking for here, there's something we could work out with the Conservation Trust. This may be something we can do with the CPC, the, you know, um, use uh, funds so that it, it's a 50% vote, it's not a, uh, a two thirds vote. And um, so I, I think it's quite possible. We, we have, as people saw Mary Rogers uh, note, we're gonna be 150,000, something like that already. And we can certainly borrow more against that. So we may be able to do this simply through the CPC and not have to go to town for, for a two thirds vote here. Okay, is that enough on that people? It, it is complicated. And you know, when I uh, uh, mentioned this earlier, I think Mark, Mark did not believe even that that was the case, but it is, and, he, <laughs> and that is the way it works. And could you identify, I'm sorry, Mark's last name is? Robinson. And his title? Is, what is it, Denny, head of? Executive uh, director of the compact. Uh, is the easy way to say it. Because okay. it's a long string of names, but just the compact and that'll be enough. Okay. He's our advisor and we pay for him. So when Bruce is using him, we're paying for him. Okay, thank you. And. Thank you again. Okay, and you said you had one other issue, Danny? I do. Uh, today, uh, I got a call about noontime from the Historical Society, and they have a series of walks that they're doing around town, and they'd like to do another walk. Uh, and this is done with uh, a member of the uh, Wampanoag people, the 
the uh, Marcus, uh, what's his name, Marcus Hendricks, if any of you know him, uh, has done a lot of walks around the Lower Cape uh, explaining how the native people used to live here and all that. Uh, so uh, what's her name? Uh, Cheryl Jaffe of the museum called me today and asked me if we would be interested, we being Conservation Trust, uh, would be interested in co-sponsoring a walk around Fox Island Pilgrim Springs area. And I told her that I needed to talk to the open space and to the Conservation Commission as a matter of courtesy. Uh, and what they're planning is for June 23 Strawberry Moonwalk uh, to see if we might collaborate with the trust and walk the Fox Island Pilgrim Springs area. And she's got some ideas on timing. Uh, and uh, so I'd like to pursue this and, and uh, just go from there and I, one of the things that I always want to do with especially Fox Island and Pilgrim Springs is to point out the collaboration between you guys and, and us. Uh, and it's all joint property in there, you know, the whatever. And we've, we've held open space in all the way through the process and we put money in it and all that. So if somebody wants to join on this, that happens to be the day I'm released from my sternal precautions. <laughs> so uh, I, I uh, you know, I'd be interested in participating in it. And again, the date is June 23. Three? Okay. Uh, I, I can check my calendar and see if I'd be available. Denny, does this strawberry moon mean it will be an evening walk? Yeah, she hasn't. Uh, well, it won't be a nighttime walk. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the days are longest then. She had suggested we might plan four to six or five to seven, blah, blah. So the question is whether you want hot or bugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have Make both. It simple. <laughs> yeah. so, Denny, what are you looking for? People to join the walk or? No, I'm looking for an okay from you guys, and then I'll go to the Conservation Commission and tell them what we're up to and see if anybody else wants to participate. We've got plenty of time uh, to slap something together, and it really doesn't have to be formal. It's basically Marcus Hendricks talking about how the Native people lived in this area at the time, and basically migrated between shore and inland and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm how they gathered their food and whatever. So. And the, I got a mailing from the Historic Society and they're already promoting their walks. So there's this, details in there. Yeah, but this would be in addition to those, Peggy. This okay. is in addition to those. Okay, one, one was for the Strawberry Moon Walk. Yeah, well, they've, pretty, already, okay. they, they've already filled up that one. Oh, so okay. They wanna, so they want to do another Strawberry Moon. Okay. And uh, so do we get shortcake afterwards? I th well, that's a good question. All right. Should we? Do you want to vote on it, Denny? Or well, I, I, I guess I'd like to have you guys support the conservation trust in trying to make something work out of this. And uh, it's uh, whether you vote or not, uh, I can work with a consensus. But... I think it's a very good idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no reason not to do it. I mean, it no. sounds great. Right. You know, it's an opportunity to put out, we were, last time we met, we were talking about uh, putting things out to town to, as to the, the, the benefit of open space and et cetera. And this um, both uh, talks about that and, you know, the collaboration between WCT and the town, which I think it, it's a win-win win, win to do it. I don't see any downside. Well, John, uh, John has a comment. Yeah, I, I just have a question. What do we know about the person who's leading this? I, I know Marcus Hendricks. I've listened to a few of his, his uh, tours, so to speak, and, and he basically gives the same tour throughout the Lower <clears throat> Cape. Uh, and uh, he used to do it with another guy named Todd Kelly, but apparently Todd Kelly's not in on this one. Uh, and it's how Cape Cod used to do their thing. Marcus is a native uh, Wampanoag, Nipmuc, 
or whatever, uh, and uh, has played that game very well. He's he's a craftsman doing uh, uh, what do you call him, wampum and all that sort of stuff. So he's got some cred. Okay. But I will uh, I'll do something to the conscom, John. To okay. It's just let's let's recognize that we're all in this together. Oh. Okay, sounds good. I just was curious what you knew about him. Uh, well, sometimes the story gets long. <laughs> well, I mean, just you know, as a cautionary note, you just there's a lot of mythology that gets floated around, and and I the question is, do we? Is this more in the mythology or is this more in, you know, what we know? And that, that's just my question. It sounds like uh, he knows what he's talking about. I believe he does. And it's quite interesting if you haven't ever listened to him. Uh, it's, it's worth taking the, the tour. But those other tours that Peggy referenced in the Historical Society, it's Marcus and I suspect it'll be the same story each time. Thank you. It sounds like everyone's uh, in favor of it here. So, Friends of the Herring River, Lynn, anything? Um, just a quick update. You know, big step forward. The permitting applications for dredge and fill activities were submitted to Mass Step um, by the Seashore and the Town of Wellfleet. And public notice was, was in the Cape Cod Times on April 7th, which commenced the 21 day comment period. Um, both applications are on the town website. May is Herring River Month. Um, there's an annual, I, I sent you some notices that they're, they're encouraging us to sign up for the virtual 5K annual. Herring River 5K run. It's the first one. They want to do it annually. Um, I, I sent you a link right. um, on how to join. Um, there are also guided walks for me, but I, I checked them out and the only one that isn't full because they have a limited number of people because they're actual talks with socially distant walking. And the only one that's still open is history of the Atwood Higgins house and George Higgins, which Alice Aquesa will lead. The others are, are full. Um, Herring Count is in full swing. Fish are struggling with shallow water and quite a few have died trying to make the turn at the count site. Hopefully the rain's gonna help. A coalition of support of local, regional and national organizations is forming to support the project. Um, you know, in support recognizing the benefits of the restoration and the model it provides for restoring other estuaries. Some of the organizations include Wellfleet Conservation Trust, APCC, Nature Conservancy Center for Coastal Studies, and so on. And if anyone wants to submit a poem, it's still April. They're looking for poems on related to the, the river, voices of the river. And anyone got an idea why my video keep, my camera keeps going? Do you, down in the left-hand corner, Lynn, there's a, you, there's a, a microphone and then what looks like yeah. a little cam, a video. Yeah. If there's a line through it, that means you're, uh, you've lost the video. That's I know, and I've tried it a few times and it comes up and then I go again. Oh. There she is. So it comes yep. and goes. You're on now. I know, but it's been coming and going since halfway through the meeting, so I don't know. Maybe it's traffic on the line or something. Could be. So I think that's, that's what I have. Well, then I, I had a learning experience this past week. Uh, sorry about my phone, but does everybody know that there's a new head of the Friends of Herring River? Yeah. Okay, fine. Dale, Dale Rowe. 
Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. his last Not name? everybody may know though. People people know Dale. Yep. Yeah. Oh yes. Maybe I should have broadcast it more. But that's happened since we last met, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, move on to the housing partnership, John, anything? Um, Lawrence Road seems to be going ahead. Um, the, the, there is some, I'm concerned, I should say I'm concerned. The project needs um, to deal with the issue of wastewater and the, the proposal has two different options for wastewater disposal. Um, one will be just the housing unit itself. The other is to expand it to the neighboring properties and other town buildings, uh, more expansive wastewater system. Um, I certainly approve of the expanded one, but the issue that I just want to mention so people are be aware is I don't think people are as as cautious as they should be about the assumption of funding for the wastewater part of this. I think that's that that that's still whether the state gives us the kind of money we think the state will give us, given the system we are suggesting, I don't think is as clear as we would like it to be. But other than that, I think things are moving along. So there is funding, John, but the question is whether it's enough if they go with the expanded plan. No, it's more complicated than that. It's what the state will, in fact, fund. Um, we are making the assumption that they will fund what, because there's mo the state has money, there's, the, the, there's whole, lots of different pots of money out there um, that we can tap into. The problem is whether this system, as we envision it, will get the okay for that money. If it doesn't, John, is there a fallback position? In other words, you could could you make a smaller system to make sure we get I the housing? Think the, I think the fallback position. I mean, it's I probably shouldn't go. In. It's very complicated because the whole town has to have a, a waste system right. proposal and it's what we are proposing to the town makes certain assumptions that may not work out so what we may end up having to do is actually do a municipal system in which Lawrence Road would be folded into that um, so we've got to get the finances nailed down and I just don't feel that at this point they're as nailed down as we think they are that's that's just a cautionary note. I've tried to talk to the to members of the board to get. I mean, the person who knows the most about this whole subject is Andrew Galib at the APCC, and the town needs to talk to him. And so far, they haven't. The other thing is, I was just at the um, Shellfish Advisory Committee yesterday, um, as was the wastewater committee right. and they've got a pretty um, multi-pronged uh, approach to this um, but certainly the um, sewering with the town is not on their current plan um, so they're talking about using people I'm sure know about the septic uh, um, advanced, oh, advanced AI system. They're also talking about some barriers. They're talking right. about a lot of different things. Again, the problem is financing. Mm -hmm. That there, there's a, and, and it's, I, it's, I don't mean to be going on about this. Part of the frust, my frustration is there are, there's a lot of money out there for wastewater right now. Um, and and I think the town may be missing the boat to get into any of that money because it's trying to run its, its wastewater plan on the cheap. That's my concern. I, if it, it, what the town is, what the wastewater committee is presenting the town, I'm on that committee, 
is great if it all works. And if the state then says, yes, we will fund this kind of activity. But that's up in the air. We don't know that. And that's what concerns me. We may, there's the worst possible scenario is we pass up the opportunity to tap into, you know, there's the compact money, there's the, uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of pots of money that the state is putting into wastewater right now. Um, and we may miss getting our hands in any of those pots because we're trying to run a more conservative. You're right, it's a multi, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's got oysters, it's got, you know, barriers, it's, you know, uh, uh, to, to wastewater at the shoreline. It's got the advanced AI systems. I mean, we have all these possible options and we're putting them together as a, as a package. The question is, I think most of the individual options work. The state hasn't approved all of them, but the bigger problem is money. And I, I, I just, I wish the town were more, more concerned about that. And I wish they would talk to APCC, which I think, and maybe I'm biased about this. I think APCC has the, you know, is the most on top of this, these issues. And we seem to not be talking to them. That's all, that's, you know. Okay, all right. I um, wanna know, sorry to go on. No, I, I see it as a really critical issue. So it's yes. good to hear what's going on with that. With the uh, CPC to move on? Anything, Bob? With the no, not yet. We haven't had a meeting yet. Okay. And I already beat Tom. I know there is something. Well, we sent, I, I don't know. If, uh, I sent out these uh, articles that are going to be in the warrant uh, that uh, NRAB is is put up, uh, and I don't think we need to go into great detail. But basically, it is a request for funding on two on two different. Uh, issues. One is for a grant to, uh, to look at an engineering project to uh, look at diverting some of the dredging, future dredging material into uh, Duck uh, Creek uh, based on the study that was done by the Center for Coastal Studies showing that this so-called black uh, mustard or black custard is not a toxic uh, material and probably could be safely uh, redirected and in the looking at future uh, ways of dealing with it uh, it's a request for 25,000 uh, to to, uh, to get the engineering study done which is you know it's not a huge amount but it, it is a request for money so we'll see and John um, Real and uh, John Duane are both uh, on top of this uh, part of the committee, and I, I think they'll be speaking at the meeting. So. The other is is a even larger grant. Uh, this is as part of the harbor uh, plan that we put together with the NRAB uh, to basically do a, a redo of a study that was done 50 years ago called the Curley Report, named after the author of the study. And it, uh, it was a comprehensive uh, analysis of all the um, marine life, actually it was marine life, avian life, everything uh, in Wellfleet Harbor. And uh, it, things have changed a lot. It, it was interesting that when that report first came out, uh, Oysters were only like 15% or so of the total shellfish uh, uh, population out there. So, so we think that with global warming, with the shellfish industry, with all the things that are happening, that, uh, that doing this makes some sense. And the Center for Coastal Studies, again, uh, has looked at this. And uh, it, it's a complicated process. And I'm not going to go into all that. but. Uh, but anyway, uh, this will be on the on the uh, on the warrant. So I'm not sure that OSC really needs to go on record on this. I, what do you think? Uh, it's not really our purview, I don't think. But 
just uh, as informational. Uh, and if we want to say we, we support it, that's great. Uh, but I don't know if a vote is necessary. <clears throat> okay. Any? Yeah, I mean, it's not typically if there's any transfer of property, whatever the transfer is, may not be to uh, uh, to Conscom or you know that we are involved with that. Um, I you know we can have a vote, uh, you know, I would think, or we can just express we don't have to. I'm, I don't think it's against the rules to um, to talk about it. Um, or we can think about it for a month and you know do it before town meeting. It's not we're not a committee that. Um, well, I'll uh, I I will talk with John and uh, and the others and see if you know if if it would be helpful to right. for us to go right. on record supporting it or or whether we really you know need to. Right. The, the only other thing I, I comment on with the, the study with the um, putting the, the black custard, I think sounds like a great thing. One of the concerns that came up yesterday again at the Shellfish Advisory Committee meeting is that it'd probably be done in the winter and concerns about would this uh, have an effect on the oysters up there or the diamondback terrapins up there. So it, I think it probably wouldn't. And, and again, this is a study to see that and if there are uh, it, it's, a, I assume, a small. Right. I, I think that uh, the idea is to is to is to choose a you know a little focal area and see if even if the hydro hydraulics or the hydrodynamics or whatever you want to call it are are going to work uh, in this situation. So that's the point of it. Uh, not right. dumping it all up there all at right. once. And, right. <clears throat> So anyway, well, okay. part, part of the part of the concern has been that there has been some subsidence in the Mayo Creek there. So I think this is in response to some some of that too. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you'll check with them and okay, have some more discussion next time if they want to. All right. Uh, one other thing, just to mention, so it didn't get dropped, but um, in looking at the properties that we have successfully gotten into Conscom care recently, um, they they don't have a um, uh, a title or, or uh, and so both Denny and Mark Robinson have suggested that it would be in our interest to get titles on these properties as well. And um, you want to. Say to any what the process is around that. It doesn't sound like it's as daunting as getting a title in a house. But. No, I don't think it's as daunting as that. I think it's just a matter of uh, getting all your documents in order uh, and presenting them to the land court and so that a, a, a deed can be established and, and then granted to the Conservation Commission. Uh, it's, it's not like they have ownership, but the, the deeds that we're talking about grant the care and custody of for conservation purposes. Uh, so that's what we're talking about. And how much money goes with that thing? Do you know? How much no, we, we, know? we haven't gotten that far in this okay. In the study. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there just so we keep an eye on that. Um, and I, I just wanted to bring up for the, the property. So there are two properties that are, we're, are still on the town meeting uh, that, that we have uh, an article for the warrant at town meeting. Um, and those are uh, map 30, 160, 186 and map 42, 137. The select board um, uh, voted to support this. I'm not sure it was a unanimous vote, but this came but I asked Ryan how it went and they have agreed to support it. Uh, the prior vote only agreed to send it to town meeting. And the, um, the, the uh, Shellfish Advisory Committee yesterday voted four to nothing to support it. Um, that shouldn't be surprising, <laughs> but it has been a, a battle. And um, at this point, very appropriately, I think, but the 
Shellfish uh, Shell Advisory Committee and others are looking at is access affected. And from my perspective, as long as you're not talking about wheeled access, th this could go into Conscom care. But clearly, this is such a hot uh, button issue. So that, again, to remind people, we removed um, 3188, which is a process, which is the parcel over by land. Um, because it is a town, I I'm, I'm feel quite sure that that is the town landing that Brian was the Cannon Hill Beach town landing. There's no way to get cars, ATMs, there's no parking over there. So uh, at one level, I think this could go into CONSCOM and still maintain that. But I, I can tell you right now that the, the uh, we would not get a favorable vote if, if we did that. I think it's something that we can work towards. And one of the ways that we could do that is if one of us was willing to be a liaison or willing to be on the access committee, this is a, a place where I think we could uh, do so. That's what they're looking at is where's the access? How do you get down, et cetera? Um, and I, I think through that, we may be able to do some more convincing that, you know, putting it into CONSCOM is another step and making sure that it doesn't fall into private hands, which is really the biggest problem for access for these guys. But um, mm. anyway, I'll leave it there. So that went through and has been voted favorably, but it, it's, it, it isn't the, we used to just present these and it would be a, a, a slam dunk to move forward. That's not been the case, unfortunately. Um, okay. Bruce, can I ask you a question? Yeah. If it's a town landing, can it go into private hands? Oh, that's a good question, John. Well, I, the problem is this, let me, let me say, and I haven't looked, is that what's listed, all of these town landings come from the Echeveria uh, uh, study that was done a number of years ago, looking at town landings. Some of those landings, for instance, the agri property is listed as a town landing. We know from studying that, that you know, the town didn't register that. And uh -huh. that, so that that land is probably to get to the agri property. I mean, so the agri, that's private property. And the other side of that is also private. So it's not that, um, you know, these quote landings, are a real mixed bag. And some of them are clearly legal landings that the town can't move. And some of them are, they, they were at some point noted to be landings, but whether they have the legal force of a landing that is not at all clear. And, you know, again, take some work. We didn't even look at this one, but there, there is, uh, in fact, I think you could point to the agri property and say, look, that's what happens if you know we're right. not taking care of this. Um, if they're not at all, it's it's not just because they've been given that name. Unfortunately, does not mean that um, all of those are. Uh, well, the the other point the other point is that it's access to those landings uh, that has to be protected also. Right. But, but even with the agri property, they own, they're, they're wonderful people and they're letting us, you know, they're willing to uh, sell the town access, but somebody else owned it. They could say, <laughs> you know, we're not doing it. And that, that again is listed as landing and um, it's, it's in private hands, you know, wonderful private hands and people who are willing to work with us, but still private. Um, anyway, enough on that. Um, so, Bruce? Yeah. I was wondering, it seems to me that there should be a natural alliance between the shell fishermen and the open space people. And I was wondering if it would be possible to, to persuade somebody from the shellfish community to come to our meetings regularly. Because really, when you talk about keep putting hands and keeping hands uh, out of private ownership, that's where they started originally with their hata when the people who thought they owned the beach, they discovered they didn't, they bought it. So I think that all this access business is very, very 
uh, closely intertwined between our interest and their interest. Right. And also anything that they think interferes with this, it's like almost like a, uh, their sacred ground right along that area, in the port area, because that's where they started out. But I just wish that we could be in communication with them regularly. But let me suggest again, though, what I'm asking really is the other way to do that. So we could certainly invite them yeah. to come to our meetings. But the other way to do it is if there was a person who is willing to be a liaison to the access committee, mm -hmm. not, not I think specific the shellfish advisor, but or to be on that committee, then, you know, because already with the, I've gone to some of the meetings around Lieutenant Island, and I'm not saying either one of them is going to happen, but there are two possible purchase options that could help maintain access for the town. And, you know, that's something we definitely want. And if we could work a project with those guys, I think that would do wonders to- Oh, yeah. Uh, to no, improve, that's a great idea. I agree with that. To improve, because unfortunately, what's happened is you've identified it is that, you know, it's, they're, they're not, they're seeing us as kind of blocking access rather than, to, mm -hmm. which I don't think is true, but we need to do some work with that. Um, is, is there anyone who's interested in being a liaison or working with access? Yeah. I mean, I I may be willing to. I have to see what my schedule is like, but um, you know, I might be willing to. But no, any other takers on that one? I'm curious about it. I don't. Um, I don't know if I could commit, but I'd like to attend. You know, a meeting, even just as a you know member of the public. Right. They are often also, which is is interesting. They 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 do uh, lots of site visits, and um, so it's another way to get a feel for these properties. And um, and John reels on it. I think Melissa Yaw is the uh, chair. Okay, and there are some other properties we'll look at for the future, but. But right now, that's all I had. Anybody else have anything else? Okay. So uh, move to adjourn. Don't move. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody following? <laughs> so 520, the meeting is adjourned. Okay. All right. Good meeting, Bruce. Okay. Mm. Bye, all. Bye, bye. Bye. Good to see you all. Yep. Yeah. Get strong, Danny. Very healthy. <laughs>